To carry out maritime missions, we currently need large vessels with large crews. Now with the speed at which artificial intelligence research is progressing, we may soon be able to replace a crew with an AI. However, the sea is a big place, and even with an AI on board, a large vessel can only be in one place at a time. We are developing a radical new technology. Instead of relying on a single or a few large expensive vessels, we want to use lots of small intelligent boats, a swarm of autonomous robots. A swarm of robots can be in many places at once and therefore cover large areas. But what is a robot swarm really? Let's take a look. Here we have a swarm of robots. If we take any robot in the swarm, that one for instance, it autonomously decides what to do and coordinates with its neighbors. All robots are equal. There's no leader robot or computer anywhere that decides what each robot should do. In fact, no robot is aware of the whole swarm. Each robot only cares about itself and its neighbors. Often, a robot doesn't have to communicate explicitly with its neighbors to coordinate. If a robot moves towards its neighbors, they may get out of the way. And if a robot leaves its spot, other robots can take over. What happens if a robot breaks down and stops working? Other robots from the swarm can compensate. What happens if we add more robots? Well, the robots over here don't care. In fact, they don't even know. While the robots over here have new neighbors that they have to coordinate with, just like any other neighbors. In other words, the swarm is fault tolerant and scalable. The challenge is, how do we program the individual robots so that the swarm does what it's supposed to do? We use evolutionary computation. Imagine that we want a swarm of robots to navigate to a waypoint. First, we generate a set of random brains or controllers. Here we use a green, a yellow, and a red controller as examples. The controllers are typically artificial neural networks, but we'll have to leave those details for another video. At the beginning of the evolutionary process, the controllers are usually not very capable. In fact, some of them are terrible. But sometimes, they may be promising, like the red one here. So we take the controllers that perform better, in this case the red one, and copy them and make some random mutations. We then test the new controllers. We continue this process until we obtain a controller that is able to solve the task. This evolutionary process takes place in simulation. To test the evolved controllers on a real system, we build a swarm of aquatic robots. We designed our robots in CAD software. We then use a CNC milling machine to mill the hulls. We manufactured additional pieces for each robot on a 3D printer. We put a Raspberry Pi 2, motors and a number of different sensors in each robot. In total, we built 10 aquatic robots, each costing around 300 euros in materials. We have made the hardware designs and the onboard software freely available. We evolved controllers for four different tasks. Homing, where the robots must collectively navigate to a waypoint without colliding. Clustering, where the robots must find each other and form a group. Dispersion, where the robots must get as far away from one another as possible while remaining within communication range. And area monitoring, where the robots must cover a predefined area. This is one of the first demonstrations of a robot swarm with evolved control that performs well outside labs in a real-world scenario. We also set up a complete temperature monitoring mission by composing the evolved behaviors. The swarm would start at a base and go out to a predefined area. The robots would then disperse and measure the water temperature in the area. Finally, the robots would cluster and head back to base together. So far, we have shown that real aquatic robots with evolved control can perform swarm behaviors. And that missions can be carried out by composing these behaviors. In the future, we expect swarms of autonomous robots to carry out real maritime missions such as environmental monitoring, surveillance and reconnaissance, and search and rescue.